I personally installed some solar panels on the roof that's connected to this. The solar panels are currently charging the battery because... Hey, what's up, Reefers? If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I'm blessed by a lot of fantastic local reefers that helped me along the way. Out of all the people, I think one of the guys that I respected the most is actually right here. I call him the Reef Sensei because of his knowledge and his ability to DIY the heck out of everything. The reason we're here is because for the longest time, I've wanted to do a kind of walkthrough of his system. And then also to mention something really exciting, I've been talking to GHL for a while about possibly uh, trying out some of their hardware. However, due to the situation in my 45 gallon tank and how the 150 is going, I figured I'm not in the right place to do it. And instead of just kind of pushing them away, I think, okay, you know what? I got this guy who has the knowledge, who has a system and who can give really good feedback on your hardware. That's why we're here. And this is also to kickstart a new series where I'm gonna follow his journey in terms of setting up different GHL hardware on his existing system so he can compare and contrast it to other stuff that he'd been using. One really important thing to keep is that because uh, Reef Sensei, his big thing is DIY, um, by going GHL, I really don't want it to become something like, okay, now that he got these expensive equipment, he's no longer as relatable. That's not gonna be the case. It's gonna be a mashup of high tech and also DIY stuff, which I think will be fantastic to see. All right, guys, well, let's, uh, let's check in with Jim and then uh, we'll get an overview of his system. All right, Reef Sensei. Sorry, you're a little bit orange right now. I'm trying to find the perfect white balance, but you know how I roll. I'm Jim, Telegram on Instagram. That's kind of how I start all the videos. Retired Air Force, make medicine in Baltimore now. Got hooked up with the reefing hobby probably seven years ago now. I think that's how long the display has been up. And I'm just sort of headlong into it, which is, which is unfortunate because as maybe you can see, I'm into other hobbies and this is just a fraction of what I have going on. I don't watch a lot of TV. I do a lot of fiddling. That's why it kind of looks the way it does. It's very utilitarian. It's not nice. I really don't have anything nice. It's just all functional. You know what? I think a lot of people will appreciate it because not a lot of people have like a bankroll, you know what I mean? Right. So a lot of your solution would really help a lot of people. And I like your shirt, by the way. Yeah, thanks. And showing up. Say. <laughs> Let's jump right in. Um, so shall we start at a display? Yeah, so the display is a hand-me-down tank from Shane Moore. Uh, he's on Instagram. We'll have to throw up his little, whatever, his handle there. This used to be an Oscar tank, freshwater tank, turned saltwater tank when he had it. Then he passed it along to me. He was like, give me back my tank when I want it back. I'm like, cool, but here's everything you need to start, which what at the time was a hang on the back filter and just the tank, no sump. I have a hang on the back overflow. It's not drilled and it's a bit of a mess back there. I started out originally with a filter underneath. So just a regular old fresh water filter, canister filter. It leaked, which forced me to buy a sump. I found the smallest sump that I could because the stand is tiny. And I had to take the tank and top of the stand off to drop the sump in. I couldn't get it in there. You'll see the sump is, a, it's a nasty sump. It's not clean. It's a mess. The skimmer's broken. I really only use the skimmer for bringing in fresh air from outside. I rarely empty the cup. It's a total mess. Don't do it my way, but it works for this tank. But you know what? Uh, just a little context. Uh, he says this, but all the corals in the system thrives. Like locally, whenever we have issue with our corals, we kind of bring them to Camp Jimbo and they'll come back like four times the size within like two, two months. It's ridiculous. So he's obviously doing something right. And that's why we all call him the sensei. Can you walk us through like what's going on in here? Yep. Like I see a lot of uh, media reactors. Yeah, so the media reactors need to be emptied. Uh, I'm really not using them. Water's flowing through them, but everything in there is old. I've recently changed my phosphate control method. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But on this side, you got no pox, red seas, uh, carbon dosing solution with this pump here. And you're really, uh, you're a believer of Nopox. I am 100% a believer of carbon dosing. Uh, Nopox has always worked for me and that's what I stick with. Cool. And we'll go a little bit more in depth in the future. Calc, calc washer. You're also a really strong believer of calc washer. Huge believer of calc washer. <laughs> it is my primary dosing and everything else is supplemental to calc. I okay. wouldn't do it any other way. This is a replenish. It's a trace element replacement because I wasn't big into water. I'm really still not big into water changes. 
but it was my early trace dose and I have just left it in place. What else is in oh, here? So you don't dose that anymore? You no, know, I do. It's oh, dosing do. just a okay. little bit. As I added things, I didn't really take things away. I sort of left them because they worked. This Tom's Aqua Lifter keeps a constant siphon on my oh, hang on the back overflow to keep the water coming down into the uh, sump. So it's, it's breaking siphon. So it okay. is. Okay. Keeping the siphon. Half doses uh, twice an hour. So on the top of the hour and on the half of the hour. Have a, is it like a refugium? It is an old plant light that I put in here. I used to be able to grow Kato in the center compartment next to the skimmer, but the 5.5 gallon in the closet has outcompeted it, so no more. Got it. So I just leave it so I can see. So everything's kind of plumped together yep. in the system. Anything uh, you want to touch on in the display tank? Oh, that's actually a lot to talk about. Well, oh boy. <laughs> the, the display tank used to be all rock, and now it turned into this, here I can stop it, turned into this Monty and bird's nest mess that you see up at the top here. The bird's nest is gonna peek out of the top of the water once the water drains out. I mean, it's really big. And I keep waiting for Moki to get his big tank done so I can move some of these bigger pieces <laughs> into it. <laughs> Watch how I'm impressed because like, I think um, you got this- That's you? Right, from yep. a while back, like, what, it's like two and a half years ago. Yeah, that's ago the first time we met was when I got that piece from you. And it was maybe like, smaller than a quarter of the size and just grows so well. And this one's just laying back there because I really don't have a place to put it. Uh, Zoas, or all of this is long time coral. I've had these pieces for a really long time, a bit of a mess. These mushrooms came from you. Mm. Uh, and that, that, oh my goodness. that leather. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a big boy right there. <laughs> Engineer Govi right there. You guys think it's a yield, but it's actually a Govi. We could see if he can come out. I'll feed it. But that leather is super closed up because the Monty has gotten so big that it just shades everything now. And I have to get that piece out of there. And it's a small tank. It's a 40, 45 gallons somewhere in there. I'm just a huge fan of large colonies of corals. Yep. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we can call this a colony, right? I'm a bit of a colony snob. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, people will sell a frag. Yeah. And it's a frag. Right. And they'll call that a mini colony? No, it's a frag. It's a frag. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, a really generous guy, by the way, if you ever buy things from them. You'll see a lot of Aptasia in there. Brothers of Bob. I had a copper band in here. It now lives in the frag tank. I need to bring it back. It's really the only solution I found for Aptasia. Uh, the one you were pointing before. That's a Senai. So that was my first, uh, first foray into understanding what the tank was doing. And I mm. used the Senai to give me pH and temperature and a couple other things. The float. That sits there three on a 3D printed piece to make sure that the tank doesn't overflow because I am using a hang on the back overflow. So it, if it if it loses siphon, then I'm toast. The so Senai, are you still getting values from it? Or temperatures you just only, okay. I don't replace the slides anymore. So Got two MP10s on the tank, nice, uh, nice. upgraded with new radios so they can operate on Mobius, which awesome. is freaking fantastic. It's awesome. a really nice platform. Gen 3 Radeon XR30 with a little um, extruded aluminum fixture to keep it centered where I wanted it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was like, well, why is there a, yeah. a frame? The, the, the 10 millimeter extruded aluminum fits perfectly around the frame of a XR30. So you can, you can fit two together to keep them perfectly parallel or like this, just to keep it centered over the tank while it hangs. And these are the little DIY stuff that I think a lot of people are going to find value in. You know, just little smart little innovations. You know, you're starting to see it with, who makes your fluorescent? Who makes your fluorescent assembly? Aquatic uh, Life? Aquatic Life, yes. Yeah, you're seeing it with uh, Aquatic Life. I hung this bracket off of here to hang LEDs, to hang actually reef brights off the edge of this. And now you're seeing Aquatic Life awesome. do the same thing with their new fixtures, which is pretty sweet. I see water coming from here. Yeah. So I assume it's from this, this kind of, just kind of chilling right here. Yeah. The, the inappropriate frag tank. <laughs> this is not cool. Is. There's a pump here that's pumping water into this frag tank. This frag tank was set up just so I could move the Monty, rescape this tank. I have new rocks and it's something I really need to do but haven't done yet. And as you can tell, multiple tank syndrome set in. Oh, seriously. And yeah. inappropriately perched on top of my kid's tea cabinet. Well, <laughs> and it hasn't fallen over yet, sitting on overhanging. Oh my God, it's like, I didn't even see it's two by four. Right. I thought it was actually like the actual cabinet's uh, top, but it's not. No. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I thought I was bad. I haven't learned my lesson. Okay. And it 
and maybe one day I will. But I mean, it's it has a lot of a. Uh... It has stayed there and <laughs> hasn't failed yet. It did drip down on top of the okay. computer once. Okay. All right. Uh, I know I like you for a reason. <laughs> so real quick, what's happening in here? Big holding tank. So I'm holding yeah. things for Mighty Nano Tank. I got his gold torch, a couple mushrooms for him. He threw me a couple other critters. This is your 24. Oh man, I got though. big. It, it was only like a sliver <laughs> when it made Ovians all bleach out. And look at that now. And your Space Invader. <sighs> My goodness. From back in the day. But oh it's still, goodness. I still consider this tank a holding tank. I don't want to, it, it can't stay there. So I'm growing things out. If anybody local in the DMV area hit me up, I will, I will you'll get it cheap. Yeah, you'll, you'll get some quote unquote frags. Yeah, frags. So in here is an Ocean Revive with a BRS DIY um, T5. Uh, I had them in the garage and I was like, well, I need a light over top of this and it seems to work like a champ. The Ocean Revive is modified with new power supplies so it can be controlled by uh, any zero to 10 controller. It works pretty well. That went over my head, but yes, it'll that's dim. awesome. It'll dim and get oh, bright. Okay, nice. So you turn it on with a timer or with a controller outlet and then it will ramp up. It's dim to full brightness, then it'll ramp back down. Okay, I didn't know it was controlled by like the power, the power source. It's, just, it's okay. yeah, that's up here. That's a little plug that I, fashioned right now it's just on and off all right guys we got to move on to your the brain of your operation because like this video is already what like 13 minutes long uh difficult to stand in here now so you dive in and i'll just talk how about okay that? so this is like the uh you know how harry potter lives under a staircase this is it <laughs> this is it if harry potter gets to where do you want to start you want to start with power you want to start with dosing you want to start with controllers dude i don't know I, i'll follow your lead all right you let's start me. with a couple things okay uh first 40 gallon breeder frag tank shoehorned into the closet. Whew. This is this is actually interesting. Can you go just a little bit into it? Like it's just, a... Yeah, you can see from the top. So it's just uh, a couple of scrap pieces of clear acrylic I had upstairs. I have a laser cutter up there and I cut them and welded them together and dropped it down to keep the anemone in the corner. That thing's only known that corner and it, but it likes to creep out occasionally and touch the corals and that kind of sucks. So I locked it back in the back in the corner. Kim's Reef on Instagram. He calls that the blue sensei. So there was, <laughs> I like that. A while ago, I had a DIY, mostly blue, a lot of UV beam that would just sit here. It was made out of extruded aluminum. Um, that was messy and also not waterproof. So I got a little bored and decided to design and cut upstairs that acrylic. Dropped in all of the LEDs that were on that beam light. So it's really heavy blue UV. The Disney that I've posted on Instagram quite a bit, it's seeing over 500 par sitting under that light. And then I'm playing with another, it's a blue tip, seeing if it'll color up. That's a bit of a mess in there. All right, what else is going on in here? We got a heater, you got a 200 watt Finex right here. Um, it's suction cup mounted, but I don't like suction cups. So I super glued some magnets to it, to the suction cups themselves and it's magnetically held. That works like a champ. Yeah, I see you're a big fan of magnets. Like, are there certain ones that you use? Because I get to ask question a lot. Yeah, those mag magnets are a tricky subject. So don't do it the way I do it. Uh, don't follow my lead. But the magnets are totally reef, reef safe. Get them from K&J Magnetics. You'll see some posts on Reef to Reef saying they're good. I've used them extensively. I mean, anything you see on the glass, all of the acrylic pieces, individual pieces are held together with magnets. I mean, I use those magnets all over the place and they don't give me any trouble. So something to consider if you're looking to mount things on glass, K and J magnetics, plastic coated. I have no affiliation. I just love the product. Huh. Looking down here, I see a lot of these guys right here. At yeah. first I thought it's like ATO, but you explained that is actually timers. Yeah, these are timers. So a lot of my dosing is performed on timer. So lanthanum chloride, uh, alkalinity, calcium, and a couple other things up there are all driven by these near pow timers. I want to be able to control it to the second because I dose alk and, and calcium uh, twice an hour, both. And then this is done once a day. Uh, and most of this is done with the BRS 1.1 pumps. I like those pumps uh, for one reason, I guess two reasons, super reliable. They don't break. The other is they dose so slowly. They're just barely moving. So if you screw up like I do, which is often, if you, if you leave a pump on accidentally, if you do something wrong with the timer, the opportunity for that pump to destroy everything that you've worked hard to keep 
is lessened because it's just so slow. Something to consider. Cool. Uh, one thing you mentioned that kind of caught my attention is that this guy right here. What do you see? Yeah, lanthanum chloride. So I, uh, I dose nitrates because I can't keep enough nitrates in the tank, but I always have a little bit, just a little bit too much phosphates. I could run Fosguard or I could run GFO, but I always have problems with them controlling phosphate to the point where I'll either ramp it up too high or ramp it up too low. I decided to try micro dosing lanthanum chloride. In this case, it's two little fishies, Fosband L. Uh, diluted per the instructions and seven seconds a day I dose to maintain my phosphates and it's working pretty well. So you trust the timer? Uh, I do. I end. totally trust that timer. You know what I don't trust? Heaters. Specifically heaters when they're hooked up to timers or controllers or whatever. It's not that I don't trust the controller because I do. It's that I don't trust it 100% of the time. So if you're going to hook up a heater to your tank, consider the crazy way, consider the right way and consider the wrong way crazy way is hook a heater controller like an Inkbird up to your legit controller like an <laughs> E-Coral or the GHL. It's a second line of defense. So if something happens and you shouldn't expect it to happen, but if it does happen, the secondary controller will turn off heat to your heater if your controller doesn't work. And, and I've had it happen, not with the GHL, but I've had it happen. So always use at least the controller that comes with your heater. In this case, it's the Finex controller. Yep. If you don't have that, use something like the Inkbird, which is bulletproof. I haven't had any problems with that. Or if you're really paranoid, like I get to be sometimes, use both. So get a heater with a controller and use a secondary controller connected to your aquarium controller. Awesome. Great tip right there. Now, since we we're talking about dosing right there, I kind of spy these guys right here. What's happening over here? Yeah, that's a total mess back there. So back there, I'm dosing magnesium. I'm dosing nitrates, acro power, and strontium. Oh, and Red Sea colors, trace colors. Ooh, I guess we'll go a little bit more in depth in the future about them, right? Yeah, we can. And these guys are on a magnetic stir? Yeah, so you've got the acro power on a timer. The magnetic stir turns on when the pump turns on. The strontium is always running because it is dosed by one of those Kamor X1s, which I love. Those are nice little individual dosers. Red Sea Trace Colors is dosed by the um, Jabo Wi-Fi doser that's total crap if you don't mind me saying. And what I did is I took that doser apart and hardwired it so it's just controlled by a timer. So a timer will trip that pump on all four pumps. They go at the same time. They dose into the 5.5 refugium. And then that, that dose blends out and then drops into the 40 gallon breeder. Since you mentioned refugium, let's touch on that real quick. Yep. I know the light was not on, but you have a oh, pretty no, interesting- Oh no, the light is on. Oh, the light is on. Oh Did yeah. you remove the bottom light? Yeah, the bottom light's gone. Okay, I thought that was an interesting no, approach. No, 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 no. The, the interesting part is the refugium is lit by two reef brights on an acrylic brace, and I have a legit refugium growing under blue. So something to consider with no blue. Way. Yes, what? there's no red. <laughs> so something to consider with blue light refugiums is they don't grow quickly, but they grow consistently. So I don't have to trim the Cato. I don't have to trim it back because it just maintains itself as it grows some of the bottom stuff dies and it kind of feeds the tank, but I don't have to worry about it. It's just super consistent that way. That's kind of a really interesting approach actually. So a lot of people will grow Kato and they got to pull it out of there. Yep. I think you're putting I, a, yeah. right? You're in a position where you have to remove some because it just gets too big. And phosphate and nitrate go down to zero. And there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a spike. So right, right, you'll drive your nutrients down and then you'll pull some out and then you have a little bit of a nutrient spike yep. as the tank balances back out. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe avoiding that just by not growing it a lot. Obviously, there are a lot of really interesting things to talk about here. I know you're experimenting <laughs> with like battery and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, one thing that I really want people to know is this guy right here. Tell us a little bit about your latest project. Yeah, that's an MPP solar charge controller slash automatic transfer switch. So think of it like a big UPS. There's been a lot of UPS talk. Uh, BRS has been posting some stuff about driving pumps with UPSs. This is a UPS controller 
that has two lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're down there. You really can't see them behind the jugs. Um, those batteries are connected to this unit. This does a couple things. I personally installed some solar panels on the roof that's connected to this. The solar panels are currently charging the battery because it's cloudy and rainy outside, so I don't have enough power to power the tank. This thing knows it, so it just lets me charge the batteries. City Power is running the tank today, like I said, just because it's cloudy. On a sunny day, or even, even in February, even in January, I, November through February, it still does it. A sunny day that fish tank pump both pumps the return pump and the heater are all powered by solar all day long awesome. until it gets too dark and then the solar car charge controller knows it and switches it back to city power and then so far it's been working like a champ awesome. so eventually I want to buy another one be able to control that tank put some more panels up on the roof and you can buy these things on Amazon they work like a champ or better yet used ones you can find those on eBay. Just try it. If it's, I mean, look, all the DIY stuff I do, it's just because I try. I'm not scared to try it. I totally screw it up. And in the end, I may spend more money learning to do it my way, myself. But the benefit that you gain from trying things, even if you fail, way better than just going out and buy, I think. But if you go out and buy it, it may look a little nicer. <laughs> I don't know, man. Some of these stuff are starting to look really nice as well, the stuff that you create. Especially because like now you can what? You can 3D print and you can cut acrylics yep. and a laser edge and all those things. Yep. And I, I think like one main thing that I hope came across is that Jim is a guy that tries a lot of different things and likes to learn. Obviously, he tinkers and tweaks and he comes up with actual workable solutions. A lot of stuff I try, they kind of fail, but this guy has a really good success rate. You built that stand, you built this stand. This is your stand, the original stand from the 150. <laughs> That's this. You built the stand. I think work. you reinforced it. No, uh -huh. I just made it smaller. So I feel like he's a perfect guy to kind of start trying out some of these equipments that I wish to one day own as well, like the GHL uh, controller here, and see how it interacts with the rest of stuff, how easy it is to set up, and whether you can hook up to some DIY projects to it as well. Yep, that, G -I -G -H -G <laughs> that GHL is fantastic. Uh, so far, it's just the head unit and the probes. I got them installed, got the probes calibrated, uh, viewable from the internet like you would expect very solid performance the next step which is a big step for me is bringing in the power bar to replace the e coral pros controls so heaters pumps everything that's uh, currently controlled by the e coral is going to move over to the ghl so that'll take a little bit of time and i want to make i want to clean things up because i just threw everything underneath the tank underneath the stand so i want to clean it up make it look nice Presentable. So let's talk about the GHL controller real quick. Um, you kind of told us uh, your short-term plan, yeah. right? Long-term, are there certain things that you really want to try and test it out? Yeah, totally. So the ION director is something I'm really excited about. It will test a couple of the things, but it does so without titration. It does so without any fluids. It does so with probes, which is awesome. Uh, what I want, I'm really looking forward to learning how that's managed how that's calibrated how that all works and it would be super cool if you could then control dosing off of the information that comes off that ion director the cage director that thing's a proven piece of equipment um antonio eat sleep brief installed one and it's working like a champ for him i uh continue to look forward to his updates on that product so i can learn from him oh diy aspects so breakout boxes that ghl offers also magnetic stirrers which is a simple thing but if you're using a product that requires you to shake it prior to dosing if you have it hooked up to a magnetic stir then you don't have to worry about that you just pour it in there uh, like i said the breakout boxes so i can control or monitor fluid levels a big one for me is these Comor jugs that are instrumented They've got a little float switch in there. Uh, and if your fluid gets low, I want to receive an alarm that my calcium or alkalinity or magnesium or any fluids I'm dosing has, has gotten too low. And I want to get that alarm across the GHL, which I will. That's, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of things uh, kind of in the pipeline. And I know, I know we call you Telegram on Instagram, but now you're finally moving onto YouTube. We've been, we've been bugging him. We've been bugging him. So I believe that you'll start putting some like experience and like DIY tutorials on there, right? Yep. I want to talk about the solar, I want to talk about the light, I want to talk about basic skills like soldering. I know that's something that we need to do with you, Moki. I think that'd be oh, enjoyable. Yes. Uh, there's a there's 
I don't know. It just opens up your world a little bit. I've already got a little philosophical about it, but it opens up your world a little bit if you're not scared to try these things and do these things. You can totally build your own light. All right, one thing we forgot to talk about, I am so not a water change guy. I've never been a water change guy because I don't want to carry around the jugs of water or whatever. I just recently became an auto water change guy. Oh, fancy, look at this guy. So there, there, is a, there is a Neptune Apex underneath here doing nothing except it's an Apex Junior. And the only thing it's doing is currently monitoring Camor container levels until I switch that over to the GHL. But it's also driving the dose, the big auto water change pump. So how, how is this working? Like, how does it work? So uh, it's I'm not doing big water changes. I'm doing 4.4 gallons a week because that's the size of the container. This is salt water. The container all the way on the right is the waste salt water. Yep, that one there. So once a day for about an hour, that dose transfers water back and forth. So it pulls it out of the tank, out of the 5.5, and puts it back in the 40. Because it's removing and replacing the same amount of water, my ATO doesn't freak out, and it works like a champ. And then once a week, I fill a jug and empty a jug. That's it. So maybe if you have a small system or you're not dosing and you want to rely solely on water changes, I know GHL offers a solution with their maxi pump. Neptune Apex has their solution as well. But an auto water change, if you don't want to be carrying around jugs, is, a, is an awesome way to do it. You just don't have to worry about it. It takes care of itself and you just fill the containers once a week. For those of the people who do not know, can you tell us your YouTube account? It's Telegram, everything, T-E-L-E-G-R-A-H-A-M. It's the same as Instagram, same on YouTube. I'll say it one more time, what is it again? T-E-L-E-G-R-A-H-A-M, Telegram. One more time. Telegram. <laughs> <laughs>